Hi, everybody. I'm Shelley Mantle, and today we're discussing muscle tone and emotion. The International Continent Society defines muscle tone as the state of the muscle, usually defined by its resting tension and clinically determined by its resistance to passive movement. So when we are feeling that resistance to passive movement, we're actually feeling three different components to muscle tone. We're feeling a neurological component, a mechanical component, and something that I call a dynamic holding component. Today, we are going to be primarily talking about the neurological component. In order to talk about neurology and the muscles, we need to remember the spinal tracts. In particular, we want to remember the pyramidal tract, the corticospinal tracts, which are flow from the motor cortex to the muscles. The lateral and the anterior corticospinal tracts are the ones that we are primarily concerned with because they control voluntary discrete movements. Next, we need to remember a couple of the extra pyramidal tracts. In particular, the lateral vestibulospinal tract, which, as the name suggests, flows from the vestibular nuclei to the muscles of the body and primarily impacts extensor tone in the muscles of the trunk and the legs. Lastly, we need to remember about the reticular activating system and how it is responsible for the arousal in the central nervous system, that underlying piece that allows us to pay attention, and the fact that there is a reticulospinal tract that runs from the reticular activating system to the muscles of the body, and that allows for regulation of voluntary movement, reflexes, and muscle tone. So when we move into various degrees of the stress response, whether that's anxiety or worry or a full-fledged fright or flight, what happens through the impact of the brain through those tracks on the muscles in the body is that there is an increase in resting tension of the muscles. There's increased muscle tone. So those three spinal tracts, the reticulospinal tract, the lateral vestibulospinal tract, and the anterior and lateral corticospinal tracts are influencing the muscles in the body when we have a sympathetic nervous system upregulation of the central nervous system. And that results in an increase in muscle tone with an overall extension bias. And so what does that look like when we look at our kids? Well, it often looks like an upper chest breath, breath pattern or breath holding. It looks like a rib cage that's pitched up with thoracic extension and overlong abdominals. Sometimes there will be a pelvis that's tucked under, and sometimes it looks like toe walking. In all of those instances, there is an increase in extensor bias. So it's the dynamic interaction of the neurological components that can result in a wide range of effects on muscle tone. We also haven't discussed the neurology of spasticity or low tone and the influence of that dynamic on those scenarios. So those are all part of the neurological components. And then we go ahead and combine that with the mechanical components of muscle tone and the, the dynamic holding components of muscle tone. And what we soon begin to realize as we peel back those layers is it really is all connected.